Chris with HobbyKing.com and welcome to the Turnergy Mini Fabricator Printer Guide. Now we already had our setup guide. This is the printer guide where we're going to talk about the software a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. So we're going to talk about the repeater host software a little bit more as well as operating Kira. So in the last video, we went through and set those both up. Uh, but now how do you uh, get a print in here and how do we actually tell it to print? We talked a little bit about the buttons. If I go over to the manual control about how we can manually move the bed around, and I'm going to do that just so you guys can see. I'm going to go ahead and slide right over here and click. And if I move that, it allows the bed to move around. Um, if I click on the Z, I can move it up and down. So that's how we use our manual control. We talked about a little bit on the extrusion, uh, the turning the fans and the feed rate when we loaded up our filament. So let's go ahead and get a model on in. First thing is you can get content for 3D models at a lot of places like Thingiverse, um, Shapeway, and just a ton of different places you can download, as well as if you uh, jump in and learn some CAD CAM, uh, you can design and make your own models, obviously. Uh, so once you have that, you normally will save it, save it as an OBJ or STL file. You can just import it right in here, place it on your print platform, move it around, do a couple different tweaks to it, and then go ahead and send it over to the printer. First thing I'm gonna do is just jump right on over to Thingiverse, and I actually did a quick search uh, for some fun little things to print. I uh, found a little octopus ring. Uh, I went down here, clicked on this, downloaded the file, and uh, just saved it to my desktop. So if we jump right back into repeater host right over here, first thing we're gonna do is just click load. So I'm gonna click here, find it from my downloads. Here is squished octopus, and click open. So it's now populated on our GUI in our screen. It does an auto zoom and you can see that there is a blue box indicating the, the overall shape and size of the part that is gonna print out. And you can see it's placed it onto our printer platform. If I click in this box, I can slide around, I can move it around, take a look at it. Looks pretty good. Now if we have errors, we'll have some errors right over here on the screen that say maybe it's not manifold, it's not watertight. That means it's a bad model. It means uh, maybe uh, go check that out where uh, it's not looking at it as a solid, but it's looking at it as surfaces. We'll have more about that in tips and tricks, but at this point, most of these models, when you get download them, are, are good models, meaning that they're, they're watertight. So uh, we have that in there, and we're gonna go ahead and slide on over to our next tab from object placement over to our slicer. First thing you wanna check is make sure one, that we have the proper slicing engine selected. We got Kira, and then the print configuration. Every time you load this program, sometimes it might pick up a different configuration if you have different configurations. So make sure we got our little uh, uh, Fab Mini uh, 3D printer right over here, Fabricator Mini, and that one is selected. We can do a couple different things. We can pick different qualities that we want this to print at, meaning that if we want it to print fast, we can print at a lower resolution where the layer heights are further away. Normal is like 0 0.2, 0 0.1 is like a normal print, uh, 0.2 is a fast print, and below that, say like 0 0.06 or 0 0.08 is considered a fine print. But the more layers you go, the longer it's gonna take to print, so it, it all depends on you how much time you have, as well as the model, if it needs to be high res or if it's just a, a purpose-built application. So you're able to click right here and pick different uh, qualities. Um, support type, if you wanna have support type, meaning does it have a raft or a, um, uh, a different types of support. The reason for that is overhangs as well as bed adhesion. Uh, if you have a model that comes up and curves over, it's gonna try to print plastic in, in midair. So you might want to print a small support and the software will figure that out where it holds that plastic up so it doesn't droop down or drip when it's trying to print. Afterwards, you just break it off, clean it up with a little piece of sandpaper or a little razor blade and you're all set. So you can print with support. We've got a lot of the information about that on our tips and tricks for the, uh, the big fabricator, so you can definitely dive into that and learn more about that particular thing with Kira. But on this one, we're just gonna roll through how to get this up and printing. So we have those different options that we can select from that, but what we mainly need to just focus on is that we have the right uh, configuration selected, we've got Kira, and then we're gonna click Slice with the Kira engine. As Soon as we do this, it's gonna go through a quick process and we're gonna notice our model right here changed. So the model now is a sliced model and it has a small perimeter on that and that's where it does the priming of the head, comes into the middle and starts printing the model itself. Um, from there, all we really need to do is start print. Now when I click start print, this model's gonna disappear because this is a live dynamic window, meaning as it's printing, it's actually showing the layer as it starts printing off. What's gonna happen is the printer's gonna also uh, start heating up the extrusion head as soon as it reaches temperature, it will then start the print process. As soon as we click this, the G-code always does a homing process, which means that the machine is gonna find its home position first, heat the print, uh, heat the extrusion head, and then start the print. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Start Print. The machine's gonna do its homing process. You'd remembered we had moved it around manually, um, so it's just gonna quickly zero itself out.
Okay, so it's finished the homing process and it's moved on to the next line right here. Now it's heating the extruder. So if we take a look at the next line right over here, uh, our heater is going to um, uh, come up to our target temperature. On this particular print, it's 210 degrees. Once it reaches that target temperature, it will go ahead and start the print process. We're gonna go ahead and just let this run. Other than that, uh, guys, always tune in to our tips and tricks on these mini 3D printers. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will see you guys next time.